So I asked Paul McCartney if he had enjoyed music at school. And he said, no, he didn't. He, he didn't like it at all. I said, did, did anybody think, did your music teacher think you had any talent at school? He said, no. Well, he does, doesn't he? <laughs> One of the other people on the same music program in the same school was George Harrison, the lead guitarist of the popular music group, <laughs> the Beatles. So I said, did your music teacher think George had any talent? He said, no. I said, well, look, is this, is this fair to say that there was this one music teacher in Liverpool in the late 1950s who had half the Beatles in his class, <laughs> and he missed it. <laughs> he said, yes. Well, <laughs> it's a bit of an oversight, isn't it, really? <laughs> uh, Mr. Wilcox, anybody interesting in your class this year? Not really. Anybody show promise? No, nothing really, nothing stands out. Elvis Presley went to school in Tupelo, Mississippi. He wasn't allowed in the glee club at school. They said he would ruin their sound. Elvis. Well, we all know what great heights the glee club went on to when, <laughs> once they'd managed to squeeze Elvis out of the picture. My point is that talent is buried deep. And you need the conditions for it to show itself like any organic, natural thing. If the conditions are good, growth is inevitable. If the conditions are sterile or hostile, you may walk over this forever and never know it's there. The job of education is to create the conditions for growth, which take account of what we have in common, but also what we have that's unique to us. It's why personalization of education, to me, is um, not only you know, uh, desirable, it, it's not even optional. The only way it ever works is to make it personal.